Wasabi wallet. Unfairly private. The Liquid Network is a side chain of Bitcoin that allows users to have faster block times, cheaper fees, and confidential transactions, as long as you take into consideration some of the trust trade-offs. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a way to convert to and from Liquid Bitcoin using an exchange called Liquidity.io. We're going to get into how to use your liquid wallet with this alongside a Bitcoin wallet and convert back and forth. Without further ado, I am Ben with the BTC Sessions, and this is your daily session. Huddle the Bitcoin. Before we dive in, of course, shout out to sponsors of the show, Ledin.io, where you can use your Bitcoin for a variety of different services. Of course, they have their Bitcoin back loans, and this is where you can use your Bitcoin as collateral for a Canadian or US dollar loan. So if you're in a pinch and you do need to get your hands on dollars, but you don't want to sell your Bitcoin because, of course, that's a taxable event, and maybe you're worried about having to buy back in at a higher price, this could be for you, and it's definitely helped me in the past. Of course, they do also have their Bitcoin and USDC savings accounts with interest rates of up to 12.5% annually paid monthly and their B2X offering uses the same loan mechanism to instantly buy you more Bitcoin if you're feeling mega bullish. You can check them out in the links down below and if you opt to get either of their loan products with that link, they'll give you 25 bucks for free into your savings account. Up next, I do, of course, live on Bitcoin and one of the ways, one of the things that helps me do this is BitRefill where you can use Bitcoin to purchase pretty much much any gift card you can imagine. They've got a drop down and just countless countries that you can use uh, this product with. Of course, as you're purchasing, you can use via the main chain or you can pay via the Lightning Network for cheap and fast transactions. And hey, maybe Liquid Network at some point. I'll have to poke and prod them into that. And uh, you also earn sats back as you're shopping, which for me is a huge bonus. Be sure to check them out. Links are down below. And uh, this can also help a little bit with your privacy too. If you don't want people peering in on every little transaction you do on the Bitcoin blockchain, gift cards kind of uh, pull that off to the side so people can't see those things. Now, up next, of course, when you're backing up any wallet, it is very important to do it safely and securely. And sometimes paper isn't the best answer. Uh, you know, water damage, fire damage, those are terrible things. And, you know, with paper, you never know who might see it lying around and throw it out. So something in solid steel like the bill fodl over on privacypros.io will have you feeling much more secure, much more peace of mind. This is how I back up all of my Bitcoin wallets. Um, so be sure to check them out. Links are down below. And finally, this is particularly useful for today. Uh, NordVPN, this helps you uh, hide your IP address and connect to any services that may not be uh, available within your country, which you will see with liquidity.io. I am using my NordVPN. Now they do have a deal on right now where you can save 68% on a two-year uh, setup with them. And that comes to about $3.71 per month. I use this all the time, whether it be at home or a especially when using public Wi-Fi, you got to be on a VPN. Otherwise, you run the risk of people seeing exactly what you're doing online. And with that, let's dive into the tutorial. So here we are on my desktop. I've got a few things open. First up, I've got my Liquid Wallet uh, using Blockstream Green on desktop. If you're unfamiliar with this wallet, of course I do have a tutorial on it and that will be in the show notes down below. I also have Blue Wallet, a separate Bitcoin wallet sitting here. And of course I do have a tutorial on that as well, link below. You should be familiar at least with how to send Bitcoin in order to uh, move forward with this tutorial. And then finally, I have liquidity.io opened and it's showing that it's blocked in my region and we're gonna deal with that in a second. But the main things you need to know are how to use a regular Bitcoin wallet, and then you should get yourself a liquid wallet, um, which you can actually have a Bitcoin wallet and a liquid wallet within Blockstream Green. So be sure to go and check out that tutorial if you are unfamiliar. But besides the point, 
right now I'm looking and we have liquidity.io pulled up, but unfortunately it is blocked in my area. Now you can click down here and use their Telegram bot to do the exact same thing, uh, exchanging Bitcoin for liquid Bitcoin. Uh, however, you can get around this and just use the web interface pretty easily if you have a VPN, which I talked about at the beginning. I just have one right here. I'm going to go down and I found that this works just fine if you use Mexico as your country, just for reference. Um, I am in Canada. So as soon as I connect to um, a, a route in Mexico, then liquidity.io will be pulled up for me and it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so I'm now connected. Basically, it looks like I'm in Mexico and not in Canada right now in terms of this website. So if I hit refresh, there we go. And we have everything functioning. So really, all that you use this service for is to go back and forth between regular Bitcoin and liquid Bitcoin or vice versa, depending on what you're trying to do. So we're going to go ahead and do that using Blue Wallet and using Blockstream Green here. So effectively, what I need to get first is a liquid Bitcoin address. So I'm just gonna go over to my liquid wallet. I'm gonna hit receive. I have a receiving address right here, which I can copy. And then I can just drop that in right here and just verify, make sure everything looks the same. Looks pretty good to me. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit start. Now at this point, I get uh, a window where I can send Bitcoin to the following address, which I can copy here. Really simple. And it says that it will settle once it's uh, actually confirmed to my address, which was listed here, which I can see. I can even get notified via Telegram if I want, or I can save this URL and come back to it at any point to check on it. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna jump now over to my Bitcoin wallet, to Blue Wallet and I'm gonna hit send. I'm gonna paste in that address that I just copied and we can verify that it looks all the same. Looks good to me. And you can choose an amount of Bitcoin in dollars or in Bitcoin that you wanna send over, whether you're using BTC or dollars or sats, however you're measuring it. But uh, let's just say I'm gonna send over hmm, $100. There we go. Okay. Now, uh, of course, I'm going to have to attach a fee to this. However, I do want to uh, ensure that I'm using um, the a, a good fee. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over to mempool.space. If you don't understand Bitcoin transaction fees and you are unsure, then you can watch a full video where I describe how they work. But this is part of why we're using Liquid for the moment is quicker transactions, confidential transactions, um, faster block times, all those good things, lower fees. So just here I'm looking and I can see that to get into the next block, I'm probably gonna have need more than 65 sats per byte. Uh, the block prior I could get by was somewhere between 12 and 65. So let's go ahead and switch this up. I'm going to do custom and let's go ahead with 40 sats per byte. That should do me. That's a little bit better. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send this off. I'm going to hit next send now done. Okay, we'll jump back to liquidity. We should see this change momentarily when that transaction comes in. There we go. And now it just says waiting for confirmations. So effectively, we need two confirmations on the Bitcoin blockchain before this will then be released and sent to my liquid wallet. So we will come back after that happens. All right, so that transaction has confirmed and has two confirmations. And it says that my liquid Bitcoin has been sent to the address that was mentioned before. Um, it shows everything, including the service fee. And the service fee, just so you know, is 1%, I believe. And so if I jump over to my liquid wallet, we still have this up, but we can close it out. And... We can compare 147, 121, 
And that's the transaction here, 147121 incoming and received. We can even click on it. And you'll note here that uh, any transactions, this has to do with the confidential nature of liquid transactions. Um, when you actually look up the transaction, it won't show up uh, any of the amounts or the asset because you can have other assets on the liquid network. It won't show any of that if you do look it up uh, on, on the blockchain. So if I go here and I click view transaction, it will show and it already has 19 confirmations. That's because block times are one minute and it takes two blocks to be fully confirmed and spendable. So uh, yeah, when we look down here, not a lot of information in terms of uh, what was actually sent. So on the outside looking in, nobody would really know what was going on here, who, you know, w what was being transacted. And so that's one of the benefits. Also, in terms of in terms of transaction fees, you can see that the uh, the fee was 0 0.1 sats per byte, which on Bitcoin, the minimum is one sat per byte. And uh, here you can see only what is that 262 sats were spent i believe so pretty cheap transactions to be sending through uh, especially compared to main chain you saw with my other uh, transaction previously that the fees were uh where were they let's look it up really quick comparatively yeah we can see that uh the fees there 63 sats per byte, although that was probably a little overpaid, um, but still it ends up adding up in the end. So around 9,000 sats were spent there, and I believe that was around $7. So just comparatively, it is, it is helpful. So what we're going to go and do now is we're going to do exactly the reverse. We're going to go and uh, use liquidity and we're going to do another exchange. So let's get back to the main screen here. And so to do that, as I showed before, we're just going to hit the middle button and it swaps. We're going from liquid to Bitcoin. So what we need here is we need a regular Bitcoin address. So I'm just going to back out here. I'm going to hit my receive button and we're going to copy that address in Blue Wallet. And we can paste that right here. Perfect. Now we're going to hit the start button. Okay. And so it says we need to send liquid Bitcoin to the following address. It does give us minimums and maximums, which I didn't mention before. Uh, it's just depending on what's available uh, on their end. But in the meantime, I'm going to copy that liquid address, make note of the first and last few digits. I'll jump over to my liquid wallet and I'm going to hit send. I'm going to paste that address. Make note of the first last few digits. Looks good to me. And we're going to send a certain amount. Now, uh, just note that my blue wallet is denominated in Canadian dollars, uh, but this is USD. So I'll send about 70 US dollars here. Okay. So the fee is 0 0.11 sats per byte. I can change that if I choose to, um, but everything looks good to me. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna review this. This is my fee around 14 cents. Going to this address and I'm sending this many sats. Looks good, I'm gonna hit send. And this is paired uh, with with my phone previously, it's two factor. So I'm getting a notification right now that allows me to fill this in. And this is all covered in my tutorial of, uh, of Blockstream Green, just so you know. So if this seems a little strange to you, just know that I do go through it. So 813, transaction is sent. There we go. So that is now unconfirmed, but remember that these blocks are one minute long and we only need two confirmations here. So this should go through pretty quickly and then we should see a transaction sent off 
to Blue Wallet. So we'll be back in just a minute. All right, literally two minutes later, this has gone through. We can see that it's been sent. So we should be able to pop over to Blue Wallet here and we'll just hit the refresh button, see if we have an incoming transaction. And we do, coming through right here. And uh, that should be confirmed you know, relatively quickly. Now, I do want to note something here that when using liquidity, transferring from liquid into Bitcoin on the main chain, you do not have say over the miner fee, which can be expensive, right? Because they want it to go through quickly um, because it's going to be a big pain in the ass for them to be dealing with customer support um, and all that kind of stuff if people are waiting for transactions and they don't understand fully what's going on. So you can see quite large transaction fees um, when utilizing this on the way out. So that leads me to give you a tip here, which is when pulling from liquid, you want to make it worth your while. So that means higher larger value transactions. So even that $70 transaction that I just sent over, probably not worth it. You know, I do it for the sake of the tutorial so you can see hands on how it works. But realistically, I'm more inclined to reserve this kind of movement for a few hundred dollars at least, I would say. Um, unless, of course, you're just tinkering around. So uh, keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, just, just be aware of that as you're tinkering with liquid. But I hope this is helpful and I hope you can see kind of some of the value if you're looking to do smaller and and uh, cheaper transactions. Liquid, of course, alongside with Lightning Network are both options with trade-offs for each that you can utilize to not pay uh, large fees when transacting. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do hit like, subscribe, and share all of those things. They really do help so much and they help get content like this in front of more eyeballs. Now, if you want to help out the show in another way, you can hit up any of the sponsors I mentioned down below. That was Ledin, BitRefill, Bill Foddle over at Privacy Pros, and NordVPN, which are all linked in the show notes. And finally, if you really loved what you saw, you can always drop me a Lightning Network tip at my tippin.me page. That is t-i-p-p-i-n dot me slash at btc sessions or if you really like you can drop me a liquid network tip at the uh address that was shown in the video you're more than welcome to do that um but with that i sign off and bid you adieu wherever you are whether it's uh, evening or daytime have a wonderful day or evening and i'll see you guys next time for your daily session <laughs>